Yeah, I really am. I actually did it. Okay. So awesome. So got a few people on here. That's cool. Okay. I thought we talked about lighting today. Does anybody have any specific questions before we, before we, I start rambling? Of course, you, you can stop me anytime and ask questions, but. Um, so I have a couple of the um, Adorama 8200 lights. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to save some money and I bought an umbrella because it was 20 bucks, but it pretty much always catches wind, falls over and dies. Yeah. Uh, drives me crazy. Are mm -hmm. soft boxes better relatively as far as, I know this is a stupid question, but aerodynamics, I mean, do you find that they're as flimsy as falling over as, as the, I mean, umbrella is literally going to catch the air, right? So it's just dying to fall over. That's what it's designed for. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's a parachute. Very, very it's often fun. to tell you that they work really well for that. <laughs> um, yeah. I've, I, every time I take a cheap one out, I lose it. I mean, it, it ends up coming back looking like it went through a hurricane. You yeah, know, my wife was wondering what the hell I've been up to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's bad. So I, I went and spent the $500 and got the, um, uh, mag mod kit, which they aren't $500 for everybody. They're like three fifty If you get them on sale, I find out a few weeks after I bought it, of course. Um, especially around Christmas time. I had that out and it fell a couple of times. Doesn't hurt it at all. Hmm. That thing is built like a rock. All right. Um, and it doesn't fall like a rock, but, um, yeah, last time I had it out was at that ranch and, uh, um, you never see, saw two old guys move so fast when we saw it falling, but we didn't still didn't catch it. It hit. And I think there's some scrapes on my AD 200s, but they survived too. I almost wish they didn't because they've got so much nicer models out now. <laughs> so anybody else got any questions? I'll be showing you the bag mod, by the way. I, I ha actually have it right here. I did some preparing today. First of all, there aren't, there isn't a table full of 3D printers in the background because since I haven't been shooting anybody, I've been using the space for other things like a treadmill. <laughs> so got to keep my, my slimness. Well, I got to find my slimness. It's there somewhere. But anyway. Oh. So actually, let me... Let me talk about how I started and, and what it is that I tell people in my classes uh, to start with, with lighting. When I first got started, I used the same light all the time. I was at F8 um, or F9, 1 200th, and the lighting was always perfect. You know, I mean, solid light. Um, I had the model surrounded with it. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then one of the lights didn't go out, it go off one time and the shadows were there. And I went, this is awesome. Okay, this is what they're talking about when it comes to lighting. So that's probably the last time I fully lit anybody. And if I go back and try and edit one of those pictures, I can't do it. <laughs> they're terrible. I mean, they're, they're, no, there's nothing, there's no shape to the model. So that's when I figured out how important lighting was. Then um, I had to learn. It's like, so, okay. <laughs> the, the thing is we're all born. We open our eyes first thing and, and oh, light is pretty amazing. And we don't remember it, but the first time we saw a mirror was, oh, that's amazing. Light is doing something it, that broke the rules. Okay, to us, the rule was things were lit up. Mirrors reflected light. Uh, even though we didn't even know that was that at the time. But nothing changes and it's always the same. And we know to turn on light switches or we know the sun comes up, goes down, we see shadows, we see the shadows go away when there's clouds. Um, most of it's just natural to us. And uh, as photographers, we have to then turn around and use it and make it do what we want it to do. Okay, and that's, that's kind of godlike. I think that's pretty cool. That's the best part about it but I needed to learn it. It's like, okay, if I want to light it a certain way. How do I do it? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I should know. And at this point I look at it and go, 
Well, it's so freaking obvious, but it's not at the beginning. So I started looking at ads in magazines. Every picture I could get that I could zoom in on. Um, when I went to, when I would go to Kohl's or, or uh, Target with Linda, I'm sure, pretty sure the security guards were watching me pretty close because I would go over to the clothes rack and look at the picture hanging over it. And I'd be staring at the picture and trying to see in their eyes any reflection of lighting to, so I could see how they lit that picture or um, the, the makeup counters, not counters, but the, the aisles. And those beautiful pictures in the end. And I'd be standing there staring at the pictures and trying to figure out how did they light that? You know, th was there shadow here and, and all that? And I would look really close at their eyes because it's really important. You can look at their eyes and you can see a reflection of what lights were in front of them. So you can kind of see what lights are around the sides, but you can't see what's in front of them unless you look in their eyes. And if you can see those, you can tell that they had a, you know, an octobox over here or a, or a square um, uh, softbox over there. You, you can see them in their eyes unless they've erased them and replaced them with something else. Um, which they usually don't go to that trouble. Um, so reverse engineering, I think, is super important. If you keep looking at pictures and figuring out how they were lit, it, it gets to a point where it reverses. You, you go into a situation, go, I want to light it a certain way. Well, you know how, because you've seen that. You've seen it a, a hundred times. And you go, if I put the light here, I'm going to get rim light on, on the side of the model's arm and, and hair light will do this. And if I put it back, it's going to do different than if I do it forward. So um, I figured out that lighting was super important. And one of the first tools I got was wheels on my, on my uh, light stands. If you look, they all have wheels on them. Um, and they have that because, and they probably have a thousand miles on them because I'll do 10 shots put the camera down, move the lights around. It's, it's, they have to move. Um, uh, I, I got to get it just a certain way, you know, and I'll change them around. Um, so it's super important. I mean, they're rolling around all the time because I, in my mind, I know what I want it to do and I know where the light should be. And most of the time it does exactly what I want it to do. And it's all, it's second nature now. Once I figured out lighting to a certain point and I was renting my studio, I would do the lighting for people mostly because, you know, it was an add on, but basically I didn't want to mess them with my lights. So I would move the lights around, do the thing for them. And then they post pictures and I'd look at them and they said, those look like mine because it was my lighting. It says, oh, the lighting is, is part of style. This is as I was starting to learn about style says, well, this, this kind of sucks. I don't want to light people's pictures and then nobody can tell that they're not mine or whatever. So um, I, that's when I learned most about style and the fact that Photoshop and you know, editing the pictures afterwards to go that second half makes a big difference. So I can light somebody's pictures and I can tell it's my lighting, but if they don't edit it exactly like mine, which they shouldn't, of course, they should do it the way they want it, um, uh, it's going to be different. But lighting is the first half and the most and very important. If you don't have the lighting, you can't do the rest of it. Like I can't uh, edit those first pictures because they're all totally lit up and there's no place to do anything with them. So, um, so lighting's important. And the reverse engineering thing, I can't stress enough. If you look at a picture, whenever somebody says, "How did you light that?" you know, in a comment, I, I so want to say, "How do you think I lit that?" You tell me how I lit it. And I'll tell you if you're right, because you're not going to learn anything if I tell you how I lit that. But you're going to learn something if you study that picture and figure out from the shadows and all of that, how that picture was, was lit up. So does that make sense? Everybody? Yeah. You're still awake? <laughs> if I fall asleep, just yell. I should hear it. So, um, so anyway, that was... That was um, that was kind of a, a few um, epiphanies along the way of, oh, okay, that's, that's going to be important. And it is. Um, and I still learn a little bit about lighting. Now, 
when it comes to which lights to get, people ask, this is, well, does it, does it make light? Does, does white stuff come out at 186,000 miles a second? Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a, a Paul Buff or a Godox or Flashpoint, which is the same thing, or, or you can spend for pro photos. If you're going to buy pro photos, you better be in the business and you better be um, making a big deal about the fact that you spent way too much money on lights because you, that makes you a pro. <laughs> I know a guy who's got like 15 of them and he always talks about it, his pro photos. It's okay. It's light, travels 186,000 miles a second. Not any different than anybody else's. So, so I'm not a fan of expensive lights, but um, Ashish, I'm, uh, uh, I'm with you on the 8200s. I mean, these, 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 they're kind of my favorite. Um, yeah, you pointed out the deal for these, like, I think, la not last Thanksgiving, but the year before. And I picked them up and, and I was able to use them like three times before COVID hit. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> so I haven't done anything since. Wow. Well, they'll be new for you then. <laughs> I had to charge them tonight because all of my stuff has been sitting here for months not being charged. So it's kind of hard to tell. But uh, um, I've added some stuff to mine, obviously. I didn't buy just the $500 stuff from the MagMod people. I, mean, I bought just about everything that they have because it's so cool. Um, I measure my stuff now by if I had only one to pick, which one would I pick and go with it? You know, people ask, you know, what lens are you using? Well, my most fun pictures were taken with an 85. I would take my 85. I do take my 85. If I go off on location, I'm not going to carry a camera bag. I'll probably forget it if I do. So I just have the 85 and that's it. Does everything. Now I have to make it work and I have to make it work with that. If I take lights, I usually only take one and I make it work. If it's daylight, I can make it work against the sun. And that's the cool part about the 200s. They'll actually compete against the sun pretty well. Um, but I'm not a um, masochist. <laughs> I shoot in the shade if I can. <laughs> in Arizona, mm, yeah. Um, so, so these are the ones I would take if I had to take grab just one, you know, and and run with it. So, so you guys want to see some of the lights and and what it is that I use and how I use them and all that? Okay. Well, I hope this works. Ah. Oh. <sighs> There we go, let's see. Okay. Can you hear me talking okay? Yeah. Good, all right. I, I've got a nice boom microphone thing and all that, which I bought a year and a half ago or so. I tried it out. It was so muffled, it's like, no, 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 no. So now, so now I know why they cost what they cost. Anyway. Okay, my okay, my 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 Is that me? Is that me? I think somebody's using their phone and their PC at the same time. I can turn on another light too, for that matter. <clears throat> These are my ultra favorites. This is, uh, these are, uh, they're usually about 100 to 125 bucks a piece. You can see the size of them, but they're thin. Okay, and there's a grid in them which I can take out, but I usually don't. Uh, it almost always has the grid in it. And if you get a set of these or any kind of box like this, never set it down on its front. Okay, always, you know, let it, let it lay on its side or cocked up against the wall or something, but never lay it on the front. And the reason, the reason for that is this will wear, the corners will wear out very quickly and then these shafts will stick out through them and then they're worthless. And then you throw them away and get new ones. So don't ever lay them down flat like this. I've gone through two sets like that 
and finally realized never to do that. And this set is working just fine and lasting a lot longer. <clears throat> and I got the, I've got these connected to, uh, I can connect them to a lot of things, but this is a, um, the 600 uh, go box. So. And I have a combination now of Paul Buck and Godox, so I've got to have some with the uh, with uh, two different kinds of mounts. Okay, this isn't working well. I'm out of practice. There. So what I'll use these for, if, if you look at my work, most of it's dark. I like to shoot dark. Um, and uh, I, I, I got this mainly from uh, Joel Grimes. He does a lot of sports stuff and he'll, he'll take pictures of stadiums and things with the lights from both sides in the background and all. Um, so he, he keeps his light negative. So there's not a lot of light from one direction or another. And so when he composites somebody holding a basketball, you know, in, in front of a court or a football or something, um, he can light them from both sides and it looks like the lights from the stadium. So that works. And he puts a, one light, a smaller one, a beauty dish to light up their face. Um, that's the one thing I just don't do very often. Um, I just do the side lights and then I'll, I'll cock them this way or this way because, well, my studio is only 14 feet wide and I can't get way over there, or way over there to shoot. So I'll, I'll turn the lights, turn the model and then I can shoot at an angle and it works. And a lot of times I'll have them both in the back. Um, and that's so I can get just, you know, have them turn their face a little bit or something. It's very uh, dramatic and very nice. That's what the grids will do is point the light for you. This background is white and it's usually, I leave it that way most of the time. I've got black, I can roll down if I need it, but I'll take this and if I'm shooting them on the, from the side like this, with them where they are, that will be gray. It won't be white because the light won't be hitting that. The light's hitting them. It's directing it directly at them from both sides. <clears throat> if I want a lighter gray, I just move the whole thing back further. If I want it to be black, I'll just move them up forward. And it, it takes all the light away from the back there completely. So that's a cool way to do it, in my opinion. Um, of course, if I want black, I'll do the black paper, <clears throat> but, but these are cool. Now, if you're doing some fitness stuff or you've got somebody who's really buff, I have one ab, <laughs> that's about it. But if you're working with somebody who's really buff, you can take two of these, put them next to each, point them both at them directly. I mean, dead on 90 degrees and you make it this so the front edges are even and then you have them stand this so they're their front is even with the light front. And what happens is you see mountain ranges in, uh, uh, in the mornings and evenings, you get the really nice shadows from the, from the erosion in the, in the mountains and things. Well, here we can have morning and evening at the same time. And it shows all of the definition in their, um, in their muscle structure. And it's awesome. And you have to, once you get them lined up, you tell them don't move now. Okay, you can pose and do different things, but you explain to them the lights coming across here. If it's too dark, okay, then they're too far forward and they need to, to, to move back, but they shouldn't do, move their feet. They should just lean back, lean forward because that's all it takes. It's only an inch or two, it's the only difference. So shooting them like that is the coolest way to do it, in my opinion anyway. And if you've seen my work, uh, you'll see that I use these most of the time. Um, anytime there's shadows in it, that's what it is. Uh, now, not everybody likes that. Um, tell you a little story. There was a guy who uh, shot fitness and he came to my studio with a model and we were shooting. And every time it was his turn to shoot, he'd run the lights in the front and he'd shoot them. They, they were all oiled up and perfect and you know doing their thing. And it looked just like every other one. And every time it was my turn to shoot, I would run them either all the way to the back or the side. And I did 
dirty, gritty. I have a mess up their hair, hold the weights, the whole works. And it made the water glisten on them because it wasn't lit straight on them. It was lit from the sides. And <laughs> they liked that. He didn't understand that they would like that. But they liked that. And people started coming to me to get the gritty look. And now he does both because he figured out that that's what they want. That's what he's going to do. So it's kind of interesting. Um, reminds me of a story that my son, uh, my son was helping me once. Actually, he was doing the shoot, I think, because um, he was in photography. We had this woman in here that she was like 6'6", and she was uh, a volleyball player or something, basketball, I think. And she wanted a, a look where she was all gritty and hot and sweaty and holding the ball out in front of her. She's one of those that she could put her hand on the top of the ball and hold it. So we had her go run around the block twice, which only took a few minutes. <laughs> and she came in dripping in sweat and messy and kind of red. Just handed her the ball and got the exact shot, first, first shot at it. So, so uh, got to be imaginative. If I have to do beauty shots, I'll do this. This is just an umbrella. Catches the wind. <laughs> there isn't any in here. Um, if I want to do soft, I'll have this on it. And generally, if I'm doing it, uh, if I want lots of light, I want it to be soft anyway. Um, it's pretty rare that I'll take the take the white off of here. There's a different kind. There's two kinds of umbrellas. This one is a reflector. The light is facing that way. And it's going to reflect off of this. There's a silver coating in there. And it's going to um, uh, bounce back. And to me, it's kind of nice. It's not focused much. If there's any focusing, you know, it's, it's here. It's not going to be further out. And I grabbed the wrong one. Hold on a second. How is that different, or how is how is how this would work different from a softbox? Um, not. It doesn't do, do any. It's not different at all from a softbox, okay. really. Okay. Square around. That's that's the only difference, and it right, right, right. doesn't actually show up in the pictures whether it's square or round. Now this is a different kind of umbrella. I won't pop it out all the way. This one's not a reflector. You can see the light comes through it. Okay. Um, so you actually put the light behind it and you shoot into it and have a light pointed at the top. It does exactly the same thing, but it's a little different. Um, now, if I have to in here and I have to light somebody up fully, like it's a group shot or something, I'll actually do a combination of that on one side and this on the other because I don't have two of the same kind. And it, it's, it's that close being the same thing. So it really doesn't matter. I think um, neither one of them are super efficient because this one, the light's facing the other direction and bouncing off of something. This one's shooting through it. So it's losing light in this too. So um, you just kind of get used to them though. And uh, it's, it's uh, that's how I just get a lot of light if I want to flood it. Um, another way too is I'll do that. And if I really want a super white background, I'll put a 20, uh, an 8200 or something and actually face it in the back. So what actually lights up the wall. If it lights up the wall white, now you're gonna have a perfect white wall in the background and actually no background. So that's kind of cool. So that's how I do that. Or I should say that's how that's done. It's not like how I do it, it's how it's done. <clears throat> Now, I should probably say I don't work for MagMod. I'm just going to sound like I work for MagMod because this is so cool. I, I, I really want to share it. Um, I wish I worked for them because I wouldn't have paid full price for everything. They thought of everything on this. The, uh, the whole thing is magnetic. Like if I want to take this, uh, this off, it's that easy. There's a little lever here that helps pry it off. They call it the anti anti-gravity or anti-magnet thing, but it's really just a lever. The only problem is there's, they use earth magnets and they use them all over everything. I took this to the junkyard chute and I laid it down on the ground, you know, um, the ring down. When I brought it up, I think there was an engine 
block attached to it and about 14 bolts and things. I mean, it's got a magnet this bad. So, so I don't, uh, I don't take it to places that are going to pick up that much uh, filings and things. Everything's magnetic. Even this is magnetic. So when I put it back on here, you can hear a snap. That's, it is not coming off unless I tell it to. There's even little magnets on the things here to, uh, to keep it around here. Now they, they don't, uh, they've thought things through a lot. They do a lot of stuff with Fre Fresnel lenses. Um, I haven't used it much, but there's a lens that looks just like this, except it's clear. Well, not really clear. It's really kind of foggy looking because it's a lens. It's plastic with the cut grooves in it. And it does exactly the same thing as the, the uh, uh, grids. It directs the light. So if I want that light to make it, you know, just this way, I don't want it to show up on the wall or over here. I just want it to go this way. I would snap in the Fresnel lens and then it's like a, a uh, almost like a spotlight. Uh, it's not gonna have the um, definition of an actual spotlight, but anyway, these are really easy to, to uh, put together. You can handhold them because there's a little handhold thing here. So I can hold the thing or have an assistant hold it or put a pole on it for location stuff, which is what I would probably do. And when you have it on the stand, there's a trigger here. I can pull the trigger, I can point it where I want, let go and that's where it stays. That's pretty cool. And point it like that, run the thing up really high and have a light from above. And then even the lights uh, here are held in with magnets. It's, there's a little safety thing to keep you from losing your light, but it probably wouldn't need it. And you can put up to two um, speed lights or two 8200s or something like that. In. So it's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool for location and stuff. And it folds down and I can get it put away in about two minutes. It takes no time at all. Then one of my favorites lately of playing things to play with is, uh, I don't even know what they call it, but let's see. Being magnetic, here's a grid. Okay, try to make it so you can see the, the, the grid elements in there. I actually have two things here. There's the grid and then there's this, which lets me put, um, uh, let's say if I wanted to, if I wanted to put a, uh, a gel in it, I can put the gel inside this and then it becomes a magnetic thing that just snaps, snaps on the front of this, just like that. It's on there tight enough. It's not gonna come off unless I pull on it. What I figured out though, so if I have this on a stand and I want to put a gel on it, I just put the gel in front of it, put the grid in front of it or that open one. And now I've got the gel, whatever color I want. Don't have to line it up, don't have to install it. Just stick it in there and um, put something in front of it to make it stay. So I've been using a lot of gels lately just because it's so freaking easy to do. Now there's one, uh, one other thing I'll show you here, which is really awesome. They have this device you can put on the front um, and it lets you do uh, shapes. Okay, there's shapes like that like that. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different ones. And these are metal. So all the heat in the world isn't going to isn't going to change them. Now I have uh, um, I have a circle just a small circle um, uh, in the one that I'm going to demonstrate. And I don't know if it's going to show up on here, because how video works. Let's see if we can get it to work.
so you can see the, the circle, right? Now, normally, what I'm going to show you is something that I would have never thought you could do ever um, with something this close. Because here's the deal. If I had a set of blinds here, and let's say I run the blinds down, and I put the model behind the blinds because I want to have the lines across them. I do that a lot. Um, if I put one of these soft boxes on it and put it close to them, I'm not going to see those lines at all because all the light from all along there is going to hit them at different angles. And it's going to fill in all the blank spaces. So it's not going to be any lines. And it's like, well, why is there? There's a light there and she's got blinds there. No, you've got too much light that's going to flood through those blinds at her. So the way to do it is to take off all the modifiers. Have it so there's just this, okay? One light, one small light, and you put it as far back as you can. Um, 10 feet, 15 feet, and you point it at the blinds. And then you have her fairly close to the blinds and you're gonna get those black and white lines. And the reason you are is because one little pinpoint of light and that pinpoint of light isn't enough to get around the blinds to light her up. She's gonna have those dark lines. Um, like if you stand out on a sunny day and you hold your hand out, you're going to see a perfect um, uh, outline of your hand. On a, and the sun is only, what is it, 11 billion miles away or something, it's a long ways off. Um, if it's a cloudy day, you're gonna hold your hand out and you may or may not even see a shadow. Depends on what time of day it is. Um, uh, but the cloud's going to make it this, so there isn't a pinprick of light, it's everywhere. So it's going to fill in all around your shadow. So um, that's always a fun thing to teach during a, a lighting class because not very many people have figured it out yet at that point, that you have to have that distance. This, you don't have to have the distance. And I'll explain it in a second. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna shoot this at the wall and you guys tell me if you see a circle. I got my little, little guy here. He's been in quarantine as long as I have. <laughs> so he's safe. And I'm gonna try and shoot him here. You see the circle? I don't, I don't know, see the, the video resolution is a little weird doing that. Let me see if I can take a picture. Let me show you a picture. I can see the circle. I mean, it's there. You can see the outline of it. Yeah, can you see how perfect it is? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, then we don't have to take a picture of it then. Um, here's what they did. They, uh, they played with lenses. Oh. <laughs> That's popping that one too. <laughs> it's not helping. Turn that off. There we go. Yeah, I kind of see it. Maybe even easier to see with the other flash going. I don't know. Well, I Does the modeling light express that? Yeah, I think maybe that's what I was seeing earlier because it was it was it was definite, but when you move back, it's it's lighting up the whole scene. Well, when I move back, the light that's above me that's doing all the lighting, that's an actual Paul Buff light. And when I move back a little bit, it could see it's <laughs> it's set to slave. So it's taking it's flashing when I flash. That's not helping any. Hmm. Let's see if I can uh, tell it to stop being a slave. Man, I got to think back from a year ago how all these things are set up. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work well when I get back to shooting again. It's gonna be like, hmm, lights. How do those work again? No, I had it basically turned off anyway. I just hadn't seen the, the command thing to tell it to be off. Let me turn this down so it's not as bright. 
probably be easier to see too. You see the circle? I can see it like yeah. half the time. Half the time it shows up. All right, let me see if I can get a picture of it. Hmm. Battery needs charging. <laughs> Surprise. I didn't charge the camera, so I'm going to use a camera. Let's see what I got here. cap. <laughs> Am I the only one that leaves a lens cap I want to take pictures? Oh, now I don't have a card in the camera. All right, you have to take my word for it. So one suggestion that Ernest said a, a couple of times is if you just turn on the modeling light on the on the 8200, yeah. and you can just show the, the modeling light effect. Yeah, that's that that works. Works. It might. That's a good good suggestion. I need to figure out where I put the glasses. So I can't. Uh, are they are they there in your left pocket, front pocket? There's something hanging there. No, no, that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At least it wasn't on my head, right? <laughs> okay, there we go. Well, it's not very bright. You can see it in the video. You can, can you see it here? I mean, yeah, we can see it. That's that's fine. I mean, also to hear you can see it. It took me a while because you know I'm a typical guy. I'm not going to read the instructions or anything. It took me a while to figure out how this thing worked because I knew what it was supposed to do. But I said, "Can't do it. It can't do it this close. It's impossible." Um, but it is if you have a lens on it. This specially designed, which is what they did. Um, because I was trying it, this thing has the ability to pop out like this. And I said, well, it's gotta be like this. I'm taking the picture and it's not working. And I finally collapsed it and tried it and says, this working collapse, that's, that's weird. Um, but that's how it worked. Turns out there's, the reason they have it so it's collapsible so if I put this on my 8200, I can project the light like 20 feet to where it's as if it's sitting next to the model, but the model's 20 feet away. So it directs all of the power out in one direction and that's it. So this one thing does some pretty, I had, I used it once to do that. I had a couple out on a walk, walking bridge and there was no way to put a light close to them because there was the creek under them and I didn't want it on the sides or anything. So I actually put it near me, pointed at them and they were 20 to 25 feet away. And I, I was taking their picture and it came out perfect as if I had a light right there next to them. It's like, that was awesome. So this was, to me, this was a good buy because the deal with lights is the more options you can give it, give yourself, the, when you go out on location, it's like, okay, I can do the following things. You know, I mean, you don't go through them in your mind, but it's like, let's try this and you can. Let's try that and you can because you've got the, the options to do it. Um, so that's... Uh, um, that's the basics um now the other thing is just remembering that points of light or what i call harsh light um when they don't have the the, the white thing around them um and they're smaller you're going to get a shadow on the wall it's like you can see the shadow of the little guy on the wall 
because the only light that's lighting it up is way over there. Now the shadow's not distinct because the light is long. Huh? You can see he's he's blurred. Lighting me. What? Oh, sorry. Uh, he's blurred sideways, and he's blurred sideways because the light is horizontal. I mean, it's not a point of light; it's a shaft of light, but it's a horizontal shaft. So the the thing's kind of blur in that direction. So the thing with lighting is, think about how it's supposed to hit somebody. And then you put the lights where you want them to be to get them to hit the way you want. Um, now, Bodyscapes was a was a trip. Um, it's probably the first time I saw um, art that didn't involve uh, macaroni and paper mache uh, or construction paper. <laughs> and I saw, it, it, of course, it was a naked woman, it, but it was a it was a the silhouette and. I did not see a naked woman. You know, I was like, oh my God, she's naked. It was like, that is beautiful. It was the first time I saw the lines. It was the first time I saw, you know, what art was. Um, and I was probably, I don't know, six, seven, maybe. Um, and I thought, wow, you know, that's beautiful art. Like a lot of things, it's like, there's no way I would ever have enough talent to do that. Well, it turns out doing bodyscapes is, is easier, easier than it looks, uh, but harder than it looks. I tried four different times with four different models because you can only have them laying there for so long, right? And I couldn't get the light right. Um, but I kept trying because what I did learn was if it doesn't work the first time, it doesn't mean you failed. It means it's a little bit like the the um the edison thing he found what four thousand ways the light bulb didn't work until he found the way it did you know um i didn't have to go through that many i would have given up but um if it doesn't work it doesn't mean it's like well okay you give yourself time to think it through and you look at the pictures and go okay next time i'm going to do this and i think that'll make a difference and it will it may look like you wanted to, it may not. Um, that's when you adjust again. Now I can set it up and do a, a beautiful bodyscape in five minutes, easy. And the only reason it takes five minutes is because I use a table and I have to set up the table and it's a six foot table, it's painted black and it takes her up off the floor. because so I have to be able to get lower than she is. And that's, that's what's important. Um, let me see if I can actually, you, would you like to see a demonstration how I put the light up for that? Yes, no? Yes. Okay. All right. I think, there we go. That ought to do it right there, perfect. Okay, get these out of the way. It's actually a lot easier than you would think. Now, I'm not going to bring down the black paper, but they, there would be black paper here uh, on the back because I'm not going to count. It's pretty much black anyway because the light's facing away from it, but the black paper just makes sure that nothing reflects off the wall. And I turn this. Sideways. Okay. Dave, can you move your coffee cup or your water cup? Oh, uh, yeah. Please. <laughs> Thank you. That would make sense. Thank you. Okay. So I put it at an angle and I, and you know, horizontal, and I do it at a, a little bit of an angle. Just, just a little bit more. So it's facing down just, just slightly. I painted this black just to make it a little easier, but it's really not that important. 
I, uh, I cover I cover it with something soft for them to lay on. Unless I don't like them for some reason, then I'll let them lay on and take a second. Here's the deal with this. I don't, uh, am I still in the picture? Yeah. The white area ends right here. I don't care. I'll bring the table out as far as I want. I usually have it right at the front edge. The floor is not in it anyway. Um, so I'll bring that out. Bring this up. Now, if I'm I'm over there shooting, she's going to be laying on the table there, and uh, let's see. Yeah, you can see this. There we go. You can see the table. She's going to be laying on the table there. The deal is, I can get down lower than she is, and the light can be up here. So the light's going straight across her. Okay, so I can get to where I'm up a little higher, and I see more of her. Okay, or I can get down lower, and it'll be a, a straight line. Um, and that's the important part. Um, the light needs to be just high enough that, she, that it's probably not in the picture. If it's in the picture, it can be taken out of the picture as long as she's not in it, you know, covering the picture. Um, let me move, move you guys a little bit here, see if I can get a better lineup or show you better. Lines. Okay, so that's the setup. Okay, the lights in the back there, oh, the table. Okay, and as you see, it's right on the edge of the, of the white because it doesn't matter. Okay, and actually the stool here is generally about where I'm at to take the picture. Okay, and if I want it to be even sharper, I can drag the table. Right the so, um, let's and then, I, of course, I can adjust the light up and down a little bit. Now, there's something I learned about a year into it. I was getting what I thought were, were great. Then I learned something new. It's always something new to learn. Here's the deal with photographing a woman's body in a, on a bodyscape. The most exp important part is the lines that you get. Okay, the curves of the legs and the back of the legs and, you know, all of that. Well, there's two lines on their back. If they're laying flat on their belly, there are two lines there, but you're only going to get one. You're going to get their edge or you're going to get flat light. Okay, a picture of their back and you don't want that either. I want both lines. They're not going to be even. They're not the same. Um, there's going to be something different about how their muscle structure is on one side or the other, something. They're going to be different. And the important part is if you, you can't shoot straight across them um, and get that because the light will, if, if, you, if you can try and get that, the light will be in the way and you can't. So here's what you do. You tilt the model. You tilt the model away from the light. So the model tilts this way, just slightly. This, so the light is more across them. I mean, straight on, really across them between where you're sitting, where their back is, and the light itself. They tilt just a little bit, and all of a sudden, the light does not hit the spine area and the middle of their cheeks back there. So now you have two lines. You've got the top, the, the, the left and right sides of their back showing up and both cheeks to their bottom. So now you've got two together and you can only do that by tilting the model. And that's a matter of, you know, tilt a little more, a little less, move it this way, move it that, she can't see. So, you know, sometimes you go tilt a little, <laughs> they go like 15 degrees. It's like, no, no, no. And you, you have to time a little bit more, a little, little more, a little more, stop. Okay, and then they have to hold it and then you get your pictures. So a little less, a little more, and you can get some different variations of that. But the light in the back coming across straight at you with a model in the middle and then tilt them that's so you're getting straight across them. It's a little bit like the two lights on the sides getting the, getting the muscle structure um, and uh, having the, that show up. 
except here it's important that you get that shadow in there in, in the uh, um, the spine area to show up those two lines instead of just the one that makes sense um i got a question for you sure the way you've described this and the way you described your previous scenario you're generally shooting them in a relatively dark environment where the flashes do all the work but the question for me i've tried i've tried to do shoots where i'm in the dark and, and trying to make it work how do you get your camera to focus are you using a modeling light is there some way for your camera to focus because i know my camera dies without a decent amount of light to focus with are you now you shooting with canon it's a canon uh, 80d yeah canons are terrible at that <laughs> they, right this, the, that's the one thing Nikon has got. There's two things Nikon has gone for it. One is it, it, it shoots, um, uh, shoots some infrared out to check the, check the, the uh, distance. And the second is nobody wants to steal it. <laughs> I'm kidding. If anybody's Nikon shooter, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I tease. The best camera is the black one that's right-handed. And I don't know why left-handed people haven't sued the companies, but Anyway, the Godox things, if you use Godox, the 8200s, for instance, um, they have uh, that red, um, the same thing the Nikon uses, a rangefinder built into it. And why can't I see it here? I'm, oh, it's at the base here, so I can't see it. It will actually do the rangefinder. So it's a little easier to shoot with, with Godox stuff because it's gonna, it's gonna help your camera out a little bit. The other thing though is a mis misconception you're, you're under. You don't have to shoot in the dark. Your flashes are way brighter and you can, be, you can be shooting in a regular room with the lights on and still get beautiful dark shots. Um, one time I was up at Bonita Creek and I had a model laying on the concrete and she's wet the concrete was wet i had a light on both sides of her so her, her reflection showed up everything was great and my wife pokes her head out and sees us in the garage and sees me with this naked girl on the concrete floor all wet she says what are you doing to this poor girl i said i'm taking pictures so i took the pictures and then i showed her and she went where did you take that so i was taking that when you came in because we couldn't, the, the, the lights were on in the garage and that's not what we got because I pay no attention to that. Unless there's sun coming in, you're okay. You'll, you'll be fine. So, so if all else fails, just turn on the lights. Now, if you're out shooting outside and it's dark and you can't turn on the lights, then take a little flashlight with you. <laughs> Put the flashlight on them, take the picture and you're not gonna see the flashlight on their face either if you're using a flash. So, so yeah, it just have enough light to work. Um, that's the coolest part about flashes. Um, I've taken pictures and made them look like evening uh, and we were shooting in the middle of the day. And the only reason they look a little weird is because if you look really close, you can see some shadows from the sun, you know, but you have to look close because I put the flash on them so bright that everything around them got dark and ta-da, there's uh there's no sun anymore, except those little shadows that sort of appear. So I think uh, Ellie just posted a picture of her standing next to a truck with a dark sunset going on, whole works. And I think it was shot at one in the afternoon. It was blue skies, the whole works. I played hell trying to get all the shadows to go away, <laughs> but you, know, you can do it. So anybody else got any questions? Mike, you're awful quiet. Just soaking it in. <laughs> well, that's that's good. That's that's a good. In white. <laughs> Just about everything's on YouTube. If you go around looking for it, everything's there. Then I've got a bunch of people with with names, but no camera. <laughs> They're either shy or they don't have a camera. Looks like Ernest is even here, but. Can I ask one more question? I'm the only one talking today, I guess, I'm sorry. Oh, you um, can ask all the questions you want. 
when you shoot out in uh, outdoors um, and you're using a flash to, to, to light them up along with the sun and whatnot, mm -hmm. do you find that the white balance is off for them? How do you account for the white balance of the flash lighting them up versus uh, the sun? I don't. <laughs> it's, it's wrong. And I'm going to probably tint it one way or the other when I'm all done anyway, which is going to, they're this far apart. When I finish tinting it, it's this far apart. So it's, it uh, comes out in the wash. It doesn't matter. That's, you know, I'll, I'm always honest with people. You notice I'm not Dave Kelly photography, Dave Kelly artistics. Photography means I have to make the picture look real. When it's artistic, it's like, I wanted it to look like that. <laughs> Even if I screw it up, it's like I wanted it to look like that. Um, I'm not a I'm not a reality guy. If somebody says, but it doesn't look real, I said, then I didn't shoot it with my cell phone either. You know, if I want it to look real, I'll just shoot it with my cell phone and I'm done. But no, I want to play with lights and you know. Um, no, I'm always on auto auto white balance, and it's fine. Maybe it's it's the fact that Arizona is just so bright it doesn't matter. <laughs> all the time. So come on, think of another question. Uh, if you can hear my voice, Dave, mm -hmm. uh, give a little studio tour. I mean, everything on the walls probably got a story and how you used it at one time. It'd be nice to hear some of those, just one or two. I can, fortunately, this is a 13 inch laptop, so it's easy, but I can't turn the camera around very easily. Okay, well, let me give you, you, the rest of you want to see it? Sure. Okay. This is what the model sees, except generally without the treadmill in the background. <laughs> that that that's new in <laughs> January. This so this so I'm I'm still four pounds heavier than I was, but still. <laughs> um, and then what what I see? Oh, and there's a mirror back here. So I let them look at the mirror. The mirror is just right over my shoulder. And I yell at them if I catch them looking at the mirror all the time, because I can't take their picture if they're looking at the mirror all the time. So that gives you a good, good view of uh, um, what I see from back here. And we have hats, tons and tons of hats. For safety reasons, I don't put the helmet up there. <laughs> And then, uh, then there's my office, which is, which is through those French doors. So it makes it really easy. I can see everything that's going on. Um, I've got a radio station there and everything. There's sort of a workstation, but I've kind of upgraded recently in the, in the health kick thing. I got a stand-up desk, which I can, you know, make it go up and down if I get lazy or if I already just finished walking three miles, I want to sit down for a while. So there's, uh, there's my uh, workstation. Hopefully mm -hmm. the nudes aren't, aren't enough to get us kicked off of here. Um, and I've got pictures everywhere on the walls and stuff. I recently took some doors off that, that exit here and I'm gonna be hanging pictures there too. But normally there's a, there's a line here, uh, a wire thing, let me turn on the light. There's a wire thing here that I have all I had all kinds of goggles and and masks and things on. I took them all down because we're not doing any shooting anyway right now. And I started printing, and I've got some of my latest favorites hanging hanging in front of me to inspire me a little bit. Um, and then I got a big printer over here. This is the the Canon Pro 1000 uh, something graph. Anyway, it's awesome. It's also huge. I mean, just to give you an idea, there's my hand. <laughs> it's big. Um, I've hauled it in and out from my car a couple of times, and uh, it's not really designed for one person, especially an old guy. Okay, and this is uh, this is the, the the used to be the master closet. Okay, it's still a closet, um, but we have everything from um, well, it's kind of covered here. Jewelry and stuff here and hanging on the wall. Any kind of scarf we want. 
every kind of umbrella. Uh, all this stuff is collected over 10 years. Um, you know, all the different clothes. Uh, and then helmets and cloth and ropes. So this is, it's like, so let's do something that looks like this. We've got something here. I mean, we even have uh, high heels and stuff for them. So that's pretty cool. And then this is, um, we're actually using it as a bathroom now, but um, I mean, we usually do anyway, but this is where they do their makeup. We've got a makeup chair here for them. And then more than enough uh, different kinds of robes and things for them. Only bathroom around that's got pictures of people in it, I suppose. <laughs> but nice big mirror and everything. So they do that. <laughs> and then uh, um, I'll shoot them in the shower. And you can see we've got clear glass doors on purpose. Now, if you're shooting in the shower, for instance, um, like this one, uh, I'll put a light back in the back corner as far back as I can put it in the corner and up. And I don't put anything in front of them. I might, I might actually let these lights, which are halogens and they're actually pretty bright. They can, they can light them up a little bit, but if I want the water to show up, you have to light it from behind. You can't light water from the front and have it show up in picture. So, um, so you have to do it that way. Um, now you can do it both ways, of course. So you can put a little bit of, a little bit of light in the front, but you gotta have water lit from the back uh, in order to work. Have any of you guys ever seen one of these? I have one, never use it. You know how to use it? <laughs> they taught me in school once. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember nothing from school. Um, it's got a reflector on the back, which is kind of handy. If you don't have a light meter, and I don't use a light meter anyway, but if, you, if you're not sure how the exposure is, if you hold this, if the model holds this up and you take a picture of it, you look at your histogram and you should have a blip in one end, blip on the other end and a blip in the middle. And that's your black, your white and your gray. And as long as those are, if, if if one of those blips on the ends are missing or they're inside on, you know, on either side that they should be right on the far edges and one in the dead center. You do that and you have perfect, uh, perfect exposure going on. Cheapest light meter you can find. So that works out pretty good. So what'd you think of the tour? Not a lot to it, I suppose. Great, great setup you have there. Yeah, it's very a impressive. Lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's just great. Okay. understanding why it lets me take uh, the master bedroom for my office and the master bathroom for, for makeup. And this part here was actually added on afterwards. I now have an eight foot wide backyard. Which is fine. It's, it's growing as much grass as it did before. None. So, <laughs> so that's okay. Um, and I thought I was really gaining a lot when I had the master bedroom. I used to shoot in the master bedroom for the first couple of years and it's got vaulted ceilings. The trouble is where I was shooting towards was the bottom of the vault. So it's still eight foot, right? And going up from there. Um, and I had lights on things that were attached to the walls that would swing back and forth and pull out. So I still had nothing to trip over. Otherwise I'd probably have some teeth missing and stuff because I trip over anything. Um, so that was pretty awesome. I had all the options to move lights and never did. That was the, that was the sad part. And then I st when I started doing it, it's like they were on the floor, they were up high, they were all over the place. Um, I still have those, uh, um, let's see, that thing up there. Can you, can you see that shaft right, right there, pulling that light? Let me see if I can get it closer. I have a beam on the ceilings. These are 12 foot ceilings and there's beams across them. There's nothing on that one except a light so I can see. This, this beam has lights hanging off of it and stuff. 
And this one's uh, attached to the beam. And I can swing that back and forth. Um, let me see if I can put it where you can see me swing it. <clears throat> Nothing like a collapsible light, light uh, or collapsible paint stick to allow you to do that. Yeah. See, I can turn that so it's giving me all the light I want on the back wall. That's how I do silhouettes now. Uh, that's a neat way to, to, uh, to do silhouettes at first. Um, you know, when you want a silhouette of a dancer or something, and you, you have to light up the back wall because you want her to be black, right? So I put the dancer in the front, and I aim that light at the back wall, and I blast it. I mean, I turn that light up all the way, and it pops, and it just blast that white wall and none of the light is shining on her. So you see this perfect, uh, perfect outline. I was struggling with lights on the sides and all kinds of things. And that one light, it's like, well, why am I not using that? And I did, and it's perfect. And I can throw, that one has a red, uh, red gel in it. So I can have beautiful red background with a silhouette on it. Works perfectly every time. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> and there was something else I was going to say. Completely forgot. Oh, yeah. The wiring. There, there are no, uh, no cables on the floor. Well, now there's no cables on the floor because most of the stuff's battery operated. But before, when I had uh, <clears throat> alien bees for probably like eight years, uh, I still didn't have any cables on the floor. On the wall, you can see a couple of them coming down. When I had it built up there at the top, just above the beam, is a bunch of outlets. At the at both sides of the beams, I have outlets right uh, about there, and they're switched outlets. So this beam, for instance, I can have all kinds of lights on them, and before I leave, I flip one switch on that wall, and turns off all the lights. So I don't have to come in in the morning and find I forgot one. And I can hear the fan going and all that. And I don't trip because none of the cables ever touch the floor. And I could move the lights all over. I couldn't move them all the way across, but all the lights on both sides have cables going up to the ceiling. So, so yeah, somebody's gonna buy this place after I'm long gone and go, what the hell were they doing in here? What's with the beams? Were they into like masochistic stuff or what's going on? as they build their train set. <laughs> if this pandemic lasts another year, I'm gonna tear it out and put an HO set in. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? Anybody go out and shoot anything? <laughs> I actually just shot my first medium format uh, camera last weekend. So I <clears throat> got the negs back today, so I gotta learn how to scan them now. Awesome. Now it's your voice there when you were talking. So different. Yeah, I'm kind of losing it. So, but some people like that because then I can't talk back. <laughs> <laughs> I can now, go. I was gonna I was gonna say the only person I know shooting these days is Ernest. <laughs> but uh, he already said it. Although I did ask him today if he wants to shoot this weekend, some motto approached me and I'm like, eh, why not? As long as I stay on the other side of the park, I'll shoot them outdoors. Don't go anywhere near them. Should that's be the, okay. The 70 to 200, that's where it's good. You know, you can like, yeah, yeah, I see them way over there. Um, I'm thinking like the you, I, I love to shoot with the 85. And I would say if I took 10,000 pictures, 9,998 of them are with the 85 millimeter, no matter what I'm shooting. So, have you figured out how to shoot with, with it at 1.2 and not have it uh, out of focus? I shoot at 1.2 quite frequently, but I'm using micro four thirds and it, it's nailing it at that, that, that range at 1.2. So, mm -hmm. I don't have any problems. And I, I know people talk about the depth of field, and I, I always say, it depends on how far back you are. You know, I can shoot a concert at 1.2 and, and everybody's in focus if I'm 40 feet back. That's true. You know? Well, if you, if you, 
I know the secret to make it work. The first time I used it at 1.2, of course it was in the studio. I, I do 90% of my work in the studio, not by choice, but because I'm too lazy to go out on location. Um, <clears throat> so the first time I used it, 50% of the pictures were out of focus. It didn't bother me because I knew 50% of them were gonna be out of focus. It's like, okay, I know they're gonna be out of focus because it's just, you know, no. And as I'm going through and editing and calling out the bad ones, I went, oh man, I got it figured out. And the next time I shot, maybe 5% of them were out of focus. And now it's probably more like one or 2%. And I'm talking, you know, the depth of field because I'm so close to them is like a half an inch to an inch. You know, that, their head will be cocked like this and one of their eyes is out of focus. Of course, it's better be the, the far one because if it just doesn't work that way, you gotta, the close one has to be in focus. Um, I figured it out. As soon as my camera says I'm in focus, I take the picture. I don't think about it. She doesn't breathe. I don't breathe. The earth doesn't turn. Butterflies don't flitter in, in, <laughs> in Brazil, whatever. <laughs> It's, I have to take it immediately because that's when it's in focus. Um, be surprised how much people move, even when they think they're standing still. They're teetering everywhere. Of course, I shouldn't be surprised. I've had completely naked women standing here in my studio with no high heels on and they fall down. It's like, why? how did you fall down? If you were wearing heels, I can see it, but they just fall down. They're just not... Uh, maybe it's the curves or something. They're not designed to, to not fall over, I suppose. <laughs> this is why I don't trust them with anything <laughs> sharper than a basket. Because <laughs> they will cut them. <laughs> or me. I don't want that. <laughs> so you're one of the brave ones, Ernest. Did you, uh, did, were you standing a ways away from her or? Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, with the, the medium format, I shot a building, but there's a couple big, stu uh, large studios, FD studios in LA is, wow, it's like 40 by 40. And so, yeah, I shot a distance apart, 85 the whole time, wore a mask. <clears throat> the, when this whole thing first started, I think it was probably March, maybe April, I had a model, she paid me a lot of money. And she drove over from San Diego and wanted a picture, you know, wanted her pictures. So it was an older woman, but um, uh, she, she worked out a lot. She was in good shape. So she comes and I hire my typical makeup artist who I trust and, and love. And we did our thing without masks. We washed our hands constantly. Uh, I sanitized everything before anybody showed up, even though I hadn't been around anybody, so I knew it wasn't here. Uh, sanitized it again afterwards, did all the things that we needed to do, except wear a mask. Okay, so we shoot, everything goes fine. She goes home, makeup artist goes home. The next day, um, I'm in line at a little local uh, bakery uh, to pick up breakfast in a mask distance the whole works and i get a phone call from the makeup artist she says i'm sick i have it i went oh no oh no because she was in the model's face the whole time you know your, your makeup artist is like right in there doing her thing right going damn you know so early on we're gonna get it we didn't the makeup artist went through two weeks of hell She's fine now. Um, the, the model is fine. I'm fine. Linda's fine. Everybody was fine. It's like, how did we do that? She was there covered in these little spiny things. I've seen them on TV. <laughs> and none of us got it. And I said, now that should be an omen. That, that should have told me something. And it did. I, I've had a couple of shoots since then. Um, but they were pretty distanced and they were outside um, and did fine. Nobody was sick before or after. So, but uh, since the last spike, no, Arizona is like the hot spot in the world most of the time. So, and you know, per capita at least. So it's like, okay, no, don't want to be a statistic. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with uh, 
if I maybe outside if John talks me into it this weekend. Uh, but inside the studio, I agree. The spike here in LA, Orange County is getting crazy. It's not worth it. Yeah, but you guys believe there is one, a, p- a pandemic, I mean. That's the problem with Arizona. We still have leaders that are like, yeah, yeah, it'll probably just go away. It'll probably just go away. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> we can't. We, the, the website here for signing up for shots, uh, 21,000 um, were available yesterday morning at nine o'clock. And that's when everybody hit the website. In 38 minutes, they were all gone. We were on immediately. We, we picked a date. We filled out all the stuff, pushed the send button, and watched the little circle for about an hour. And that was it. They were, no, we're not in. They have no idea how to. I used to be a webmaster. They have no idea how to, how to write a program. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as we hit that button on when we wanted it, it should have tagged that one for us until we finished or 10 minutes went by and then release it. But no, you know how many thousands and thousands and thousands of people were sitting there watching little circles going on their screen? Thinking they, <laughs> thinking they were going to get shot? No, <laughs> that is not the way to win, win awards. <laughs> Damn. I don't know who's eight year old wrote the website, but geez. So we're, we're hoping we'll probably get our shots from CVS someday. That's right around the corner. Well, my wife got hers yesterday. Awesome. Uh, How come you didn't I'm get not, yours? I'm not old enough yet. So I married an older woman. I got smart. Oh, I did too. <laughs> I did too. Are you, are you of the belief that you're going to out, uh, she's going to outlive you anyway? Because oh yeah, she will. That, trust me, she will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mine will too. No question. Yeah, uh, mine's always like, wow, how many times has he brought me to the ER because of stupid mistakes? Yeah, <clears throat> but never had to bring her to the doctor once. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's, I will say people were crazy there getting to go get the shot uh they did it at the disneyland parking lot and yeah it was just the uh, they're like crazy to drive there and get there and get a shot and you're like it's gonna happen you're in line don't worry um, <clears throat> there was a time we couldn't buy toilet paper and now we can so soon everything changes <laughs> i think the toilet paper is more important actually <laughs> you get to a certain age you get your priorities different So did you guys get anything out of it tonight? Absolutely. Okay, cool. By the time we get to shoot again, it was like, oh, Zoom. I tried that once. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the, the biggest thing about anything I figured out, and I wish I'd figured this out when I was a lot younger. I mean, how many times can you tell yourself that? Everything that looks complicated is not. Um, brain surgery might be, but I can point to people who it probably wouldn't be (laughs) complicated. Um, but everything, if broken down, it's just a whole bunch of little simple things put together. This, all the little things that you learn all end up being some big complicated thing. And you, it's like when you were going to school and you got this textbook that was this thick and you flip through and go, Oh my God, there's no way I'm going to learn all this stuff. And by the time the class is over, you look, flip through the book and say, I remember every one of those classes, you know, well, when you're younger, I don't, I wouldn't have remembered the book, but um, yeah. And everything, photography, everything is that way. And photography is as complicated as you want it to be. Um, And that's the, that's the interesting part of it. So it's nice if it's a, it's nice if it's a passion and you don't have to do anything else. You know, and when you do something over and over again, the more you do it, the easier it gets. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I was just thinking, you know, from what you're saying, I was just thinking it. When I used to do film photography, I used to work on training my eyes and my brain to see light. And when that was in film and in the digital age. Um, I think about it. I always shoot manual 
all right but i never even think about the meter i just just set the camera to what i think it should be and take the picture i'm like okay maybe i'll just change it a, a half a stop or something but i'm pretty pretty close right there just not thinking just look and say okay let's turn this f8 whatever and boom there's the shot and uh it's it's like nothing really changes so when you can learn to see oh yeah in front of you it's just like <laughs> you don't think about it you just do it and where i find worse like right now i, I went out and i shot something i don't know what maybe the kids i don't recall what it was um someone asked me to take some pictures and it was local no shoot not not a kind of shoot like we do but uh, the point I'm trying to drive is I know that if I don't shoot often, you get rusty. You make little mistakes. But the more you go out there shooting, the more you practice, the more and you're keeping it consistent, it becomes old hat on the on the technical parts. Oh, yeah. And then you're just thinking about the creativity. What can I do to make this special? You, you nailed it right there. Yeah. And even when you're rusty, it only takes a couple of shoots and you're back in the, in the game again. It's muscle memory. It's still yeah. there. Um, but yeah, I remember since it's, since I've only been shooting for 10 and a half years, I remember getting my equipment and the next day I, I got a bunch of lenses and a 5D Mark II. And I went to the park and I sat on a picnic table and I shot birds and cars and trees and you know, I shot everything and I would do it in automatic just so I could see what the settings were. And then I would set it to that in manual and then play around with those settings to see what they did. And I mean, I had to get, I had to get the feel for it. And I knew I needed to do that, you know, and there's really only two settings. I mean, ISO is only if it's too dark. So there's really only two settings. So it's like, so how do they interact? How do they do the thing? And now I don't think about it. I mean, I know if, if I want, you know, if I want a certain look, I know what lens to use and I know exactly how to, how to set it to get it. Um, yeah. And speaking on that, to that point, like I said, I shoot with the 85 all the time and I know it. And, you know, I, I've, I've owned, I've owned zoom lenses. I used to shoot with zoom lenses all the time, but to me, it's like, I, I refuse to use a zoom lens now for the mere fact that Every time I touch that lens, I've affected the entire image in some way or, or some form. It's no longer consistent. Um, with the 85, it doesn't matter if I move close or far away, it's still got the same perspective of an 85 and nothing's changing. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about that. So when you, when you make it simple, it is easier. And one other thought I just, I had earlier on, you were talking about lighting and the different manufacturers I don't think there's a human being alive that can look at an image and say, this was shot with a bronze color. This was shot with a Godox. Right, yeah. You know, light is light. So. That's true. Now I can tell cameras sometimes, Hasselblad in particular, if somebody shot with a Hasselblad, I can kind of look at the picture and tell you it was a Hasselblad. Other than that, I can't. And it won't be long and Hasselblad will be in the dust because, oh, you mean you don't have a hundred megapixel camera? Yeah, I don't have the disk space for that. I have terabytes and terabytes of, of stuff. That's the only bright bright spot of this whole pandemic thing. I've had the light in everybody's eyes, sorry. Um, I have so many pictures from so many shoots that I didn't edit because, well, I had the next shoot and I added a few of that. And then I had the next shoot and I added a few from that. And I can go back and look at these shoots and go, how the hell did I miss that one? You know, so, and I'm... The models are, it's really kind of funny. It's a, it's a psychology thing. Hey, Dave, how's it going? They want their name in front of me. This I'll go look at our shoot. <laughs> and it works because I go, oh man, I wonder if there's any of them of her or if it's some model's uh, birthday. All right, let me go look and see if there's anything I can give to her for her birthday. I'm going to edit something anyway. So... <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm posting new pictures, usually a couple a day. I haven't shot for a year. Well, I've shot a little, but not much. But yeah, well, that's always great to do. Mm -hmm. and have you gone back and re-edited an old photo that you've edited before? I have Just a few. 
my banner, my banner right now uh, has a nun with a snake. <laughs> I was trying so hard to piss somebody off and it didn't work. <laughs> they just go, oh, it's Dave. <laughs> Don't bother. <laughs> I had taken that picture um, a long time ago and I took the same picture, edited it again and put a church behind her. Made a huge difference, completely different. Um, <clears throat> and to top it off, somebody told me it was an Orthodox church. So <laughs> the only thing that was missing was an apple. Um, the big question was, who's trying to convince the other one of something? The snake convincing her or her convincing the snake? <laughs> Yeah. And you know, it's weird. I haven't, I haven't, I don't know why, but when the pandemic hit, I have not edited a single photo. I take that back. I did last week for the first time. Uh, just, I don't know why, just decided to do some editing and record it and put it on, on Facebook. And, you know, so I did a little clip of that and it's like, why did I touch this photo? And I haven't, I got it. The last shot I done was with Ernest. And it was like right in February and I haven't edited a single shot from that shoot. <laughs> I pulled one out that's like from six or eight years ago and, and just started working on that one. Wow. Well, I, I get the shakes if I don't edit something. I love to edit. And I mean, I'll look at a picture and go, huh, I wonder what I can do with this. Uh, I did one of a girl on a mirror um, just the other day. Um, I put it in my newsletter because I couldn't post it. And there was too many things to have to fuzz out to even worry about posting it on social media. And um, it's a really good picture, but going into it, I had no idea what I was gonna do. And I started editing and editing and smoothing this and changing that and stretching this and doing this. And so it's, it kind of needs a background. But once again, I put a church in, <laughs> inside of a church. So here she is nude. <clears throat> with a chain between her legs um, laying on the floor in between all the pews in the church. And it's, 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 it's full of messages of some kind. I don't know what, but it just really looked good. And it, she was actually shot on a real mirror. So there's a mirror image of her. And then when I, when I brought the floor in, I brought the floor in at half opacity. So her reflection on the floor was real. You know, it was pretty interesting. Speaking of that, see that gray thing back there? Yes. That's a mirror. All you have to do is find somebody who does uh, flips homes and say, look, I want to pick up all the mirrors that you can for a while, if you want a mirror. And they'll, they'll call you and say, okay, I got one. Come get it. Because they don't know what to do with them. They pull the mirrors out of everybody's remodels because they've got these big gaudy 60s 70s 80s mirrors and they want to put nice fancy ones in so they always pull out the old mirrors i finally had to tell the guy i don't need any more mirrors i think i've got 10 mm, wow um there there's oh, i can't show you but in the back corner back here there's a nine foot long mirror my wife and i got it from an alley mm. and we were on a walk and we said there's a mirror there in the alley we came back, back with the truck. We got it and we hung it on the wall. Nine foot mirror and we didn't break it somehow. Wow. <laughs> uh, That's you know, good luck. Need to, you need to do some editing because you get rusty on that too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and uh, editing is a part like you, I do love. The only problem I find, and Ernest and I, we shoot TFP all the time. The only problem I find is that you'll go and you'll spend this exorbitant amount of time on an edit that you're absolutely enthralled about and you will post it or deliver it. And then the model will ask, well, what about the other 25 pictures we took? It's like, uh-uh, <laughs> that's it. No, <laughs> well, let's see. I think you're going to get all 25 of them in about 25 years based on our <laughs> <laughs> You know, I I very rarely have any models complain and ask for more pictures. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I give them five to eight usually to start with, or they know that they'll piss me off if they do and they won't get any. 
Yeah. I'm an old guy. And I have thin skin. I don't, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not proud of it, but that's what I am. Um, no, there's, there's, uh, I, I've, ha- I've got one who she's really good and it's embarrassing because she'll say, did you get any of me in the red outfit, you know, red latex body outfit, any of those turn out, I'll go look at that shoot and there'll be a whole bunch of sets I didn't do anything with. I didn't even remember taking them. It's like, yeah, yeah, I think there might be a few more in there I can get. It's like, wow, this is a treasure trove. It's like I just did a shoot because I don't even remember shooting it, but at least it's lit up right. (laughs) Yeah. So Dave, that you don't show the models the images after a shoot. You'll pick your favorites. I'll let them sometimes. I, I actually stopped doing this. At times I sat them down at, in, in front of Lightroom, said, okay, star all of them that you like. I don't care how many, just star them. Just understand you're going to get what I want. I'm going to give you anyway. Um, but if there's two that are close and you like this one and it's like, well, all right, I'll do the one she likes. Um, some of them is, I, why did they pick that one? That sucks. That's a terrible picture. Um, so yeah, I don't bother anymore and they don't care. I, I say, well, shoot was great. Have a nice day. Bye. And they leave. And I think part of it was, uh, something happened in my, my uploads were taking forever on Lightroom. So we didn't have, there wasn't enough time to upload them anyway. So not a huge deal, <clears throat> but they, they still get pictures. Some of them get pictures that nobody ever sees. It's like, that's okay. It's in my, my portfolio. I'm fine with it, but I still have a bunch of mine that I have yet to touch from when I did the workshop with you. Ah, yeah. Well, that, as a matter of fact, I looked at them a few days ago. That's, that's one of the things that I think it's like lighting um, and using your camera. It's one of those things that I can now edit and it's muscle memory kind of. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well, now I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I actually, I don't even think about it. I just do them. Mm-hmm. And then I got a new device. Let me, uh, I'll be right back. I added this to my editing routine. It's just a little device that has nine buttons, a circle or a ring that I can spin and and a button in the middle. The button in the middle, if I push it, it toggles the ring between zooming in and out and brush size. And then each one of those, this one is save, this one's dodge and burn, or actually runs an action for me. This one runs frequency separation. I've now learned what buttons I've assigned them, okay? Mm -hmm. And I paid, spent a lot of time assigning them, knowing that whatever I assign, that's what they're gonna be forever because I'm not gonna be able to relearn them once I learn them once. And now I don't even have to look. I can be editing and my left hand is pushing the buttons to bring up the things that I need brought up. And I don't, I don't have to even think about it or go over and pull things or hit the save or flatten an image. I've got a button for all of those. So all the things that I do are right there. It's so important. I bought a second one just in case something happened to one of them. Cause wow. I knew that if, if I lost one, I'd be lost then. Cause it's like, Oh man, I don't have the buttons. I got to remember where all this stuff is. I have a question. Sure. Um, I know that you just got into some of the magma stuff. And I also know that you have that 3D printer. Have you tried to print you any uh, mag grids or anything like that yet? No, uh uh-uh. I guess I probably could, but I'm at that point where I don't really need, I mean, I've got everything they have and I can't think of anything (laughs) I could use that didn't sell me for for exorbitant prices. But yeah, Yeah. earth magnets, you could do some pretty cool stuff. I hadn't even thought of that. But yeah, that's awesome. Dave, what's the name of that magic bullet you have for editing the oh, device you showed us? This is from uh, uh, XP Pen. XP as in XP dash pen. Um, 
I found it on Amazon. The XP Pen site doesn't actually have it, which is really weird. Uh, but Amazon has it. And the model number is an AC-19. See, this one says pad two. That's I like all the different the screen. But see, that goes along with uh, my new editing tool, which is, um, I don't use, oh, see the, see the tablet here? Oh. Mm -hmm. The tablet with the ring and all that. This is an XP pen tablet I bought a year ago. Um, just because I wanted to see, I knew Wacom wasn't the only game in town and I wanted to see who else is out there. You know, you blink or you wait 15 minutes and everything changes. And sure enough, uh, there was, it was a hundred bucks. Actually, it was more like 89 bucks, I think. Um, and it doesn't look like it's worn at all. And I worked the heck out of it. I stopped using the Wacoms as soon as I got that. Um, the Wacoms, I still have them and they look, they look like they've been through war because they wore out basically. Um, and I think they count on that. Now I use this. Let me get the camera right. So I can, I can edit directly to here. Okay, so I'm drawing right on the model to get what I want. And the coolest thing there is, I mean, you really get into it. Um, it's a learning process, but it took me a lot less time. And if I got one of these and it was a Wacom, it would be a Cintiq, right? It would mm -hmm. That's what I have. It would probably be what, three grand? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. $800. I have the older model, the 13, uh, 13 inch. I tried a 13 and I sold it off because I couldn't use it. All I okay. could see all I could see is pixels and mm -hmm. it's like, no, I can't, no, I can't do this. And it was too small. I mean, yeah, my, my mine's papers, still in the box. My papers are still getting, are getting older every day. So, um, or every minute it seems. Um, and, uh, I couldn't handle it. I mean, I tried using my 12 inch, uh, pad iPad because you know, you can use it as a second monitor and drag mm -hmm. Lightroom over it's too small. It just wouldn't work. So, so I tried them and it didn't work. So then I'm looking, this is around is before Christmas, I guess around November, um, said, well, I wonder who else has what? And I was already impressed with XP pen and their quality. And I'm going, hmm, they sent me a message, probably an email said, oh, and we've got this stuff too. Said, Wait, they've got the things you can draw on? Ah, let me look, if it was bigger, I'd probably be happy with it. So I went and looked and they had a 22 inch one. It was on sale. Actually it went on sale the day after I bought it, but they gave me my extra $140 back, which is fine, which is good. And it was good, but it was 1920 across and it was a 22 inch. I couldn't see the pixels, but I could tell they were there. I mean, it was that close and I fell in love with it. I said, this is awesome. This is amazing. Well, I have two homes, so it's like, ah, I got an excuse to buy a second one. Mm -hmm. So I bought the 24 inch one instead, um, which is in you know, two more inches, no big deal, except it was 2540 across instead of 1920 for that extra inch and a half across or whatever it is. So, so I can't see pixels. Uh, it's not as clear as a cinema display or my retina displays on my Macs, but um, uh, which I, I think with uh, Cintiq, you can get uh, some now that are 4K, you know, mm -hmm. super high res, but you're paying a lot of money for them. So it, de it depends. I don't, if I used it eight hours a day, I'd have one of those. Mm -hmm. If you're going to, if you're going to drive all day, you want to have a comfortable car. So, Absolutely. so it's, uh, um, it's pretty, I mean, I haven't, I haven't uh, done an edit on a non- video display now since November. Um, and the first week I, I was doing eight or 10 a day because I was, so this is so cool to be able to actually draw right where I need to, to do the job. This is awesome. I don't know if I probably lost the hand eye coordination with the screen. Anyway, I could probably couldn't do it now if I wanted to, but, um, but I love it. It's great. 
Uh, I've since sold a smaller one. I just have a carrying case. I can take this back and forth if I want. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. And with the MacBook with the USB-C, there's one cable. It's just one little cable. Okay. Not a bunch of HDMI or any of that stuff. That's, that's a, I think they only make one 24 inch one. So if you look at the XP pros, uh, XP pens and look at those. Uh, now they have some that are, that are uh, you know, 16 inch and 22. And I think they may even have one in between those. They're starting to get to the sizes that they're, they're good. But I had a problem with the smaller ones. Um, bigger one, no problem at all. Now, what I did learn, and if anybody does this, here's, here's a trick. Turn the brightness down to like 20%. You know, all my monitors, I have them really bright. It's really because they really look nice and all that. If you're down there editing like this, your eyeballs will, will melt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just can't. So I kept cranking it down and cranking it down until my eyes got used to it. And my monitors are 20% brightness. And I'm fine. Yeah, it also eliminates your images coming out too dark too because your monitor is too bright. Yeah, yeah. Quite. Hey, Dave, <clears throat> Dave, did that AC19 work when you were on your iPad also? It should work with anything. Um, it has a, you can't see it here. See the little hole in the back? It's, okay. It's just a little communications uh, dongle thing that you plug into the side of whatever computer you have, it talks to that. And then whatever you program these buttons to do, it sends those as if it's a keyboard. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm starting to use my iPad to edit on through the computer to a program, <clears throat> but trying to find the damn buttons on the iPad. It's not easy. Ah, well, I don't know if you could, if you were just using the iPad, I don't, I don't think there's, yeah, you couldn't use this with just the iPad because you've got to have uh, some software loaded on the, yeah, the PC or the man. Well, I use my iPad as a drawing tablet uh, it, to my computer now. Okay. If it's connected to the computer, then it would yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you just, if you, if you're using it as a sidecar or something and you just drag your, your uh, Photoshop over to um, the iPad, you're not actually using the iPad except for a monitor. So, yeah, I'm using it for the monitoring to draw on with the Apple pen. Now, after watching, talking to you before about it it's so much easier than a tablet yeah being able to just get right on it and yeah it is amazing and then be able to zoom in and, out and one of these buttons is a hand so i push the hand button and i can drag the the uh picture around it wherever i want it to be and do my thing i mean it's cool once you learn it only took me about a week to get used to what each of those buttons does Come to think of it, I can't remember what the center was. Yes, I do. It puts my logo on it. Press the center one. Boop, my logo shows up on the on the thing, and then I press the one below it, and it automatically does a uh, uh, select. So it selects the logo, so I can change the size and then pick it up, and move it around. So even putting my logo on things is so much easier than. Wow. Oh man, I got three chats here, and I wasn't even looking at them. Sorry if the people are still there. Um, most of them are saying, thanks, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest, you said more sandbags? Oh, earlier the gentleman was talking about um, the umbrellas falling down. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, you gotta, then you gotta drag the hand and the sandbags around. Well, he needs a fancy cart like you have. What I, what I really need to do, what I do if I can, is I'll make sure they have a husband or boyfriend they I can take along and then they can carry most of this stuff for me. <laughs> then if the light falls, I've got somebody to blame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too much fun. So, well, Dave, thank you again for a, a little bit, of those tidbits of information. Just... Uh, keep the creativity going. You know? And I agree with you. Simplicity is, uh, is the key. Looking at how simple you do things, but yet how artistic and how creative you can be with them. That was wonderful. No, thanks. Yeah. Well, I really miss teaching. 
And the last big class I had was the one over there, believe it or not. Um, well, when the pandemic goes away, we'll find another studio since Dave had to close and we'll do another one. How's that? Did he have to close? Uh, <clears throat> the building, the people in the uh, <clears throat> office next to him put in CNC machines. So the place got noisy and smelled like machine oil every day. Oh. So you couldn't, you couldn't hear your each other, each other talk inside there. And it was always smelly and they were running them like all day long, all night long too. So hard to rent it when someone can't talk to the model. Yeah, no, that's true. It's true. They don't know. They don't know the hands. Mm -hmm. well. All right. Well, thank you guys for, uh, for participating. It was fun. You're thank welcome. you, Dave. So yeah. Thanks thank a lot. Dave. Dave. All right. So Miss Linda, I said hi. Oh, I will. I see her. There she is. Oh. Hey, Miss Linda. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. It's good yeah. to see you again. Good to see you too. Despite come being, back out there. This, despite being stuck with me, she's doing all right. <laughs> I gotta come back out and see y'all. Get some more pizza. Yeah. Works for me. Uh, all right, right guys y'all have a great right. night take yep. care now good night bye-bye good night you guys later <laughs> did you record it i did